the element tin has been known since ancient times. I mean, it was written about by the Greeks, Aristotle, and so on. Because it's very, very easy to smelt. And so it was actually obtained as a metal way, way back. Now, one of the very strange things about it is that it makes a noise. And I'd like you to listen. Listen very carefully. Can you hear that creaking? It's called the cry of tin. And tin is almost unique. The only other element that does this, I believe, is indium. And it's a process by which when you distort this metal, the crystal planes actually slide past each other. And in doing so, there's a series of abrupt jerks. And that give ri gives rise to that creaking noise. And so that creaking noise is really reflecting something very important about the internal structure of the metal. But there's more to it. That isn't just the only sound that tin makes. In fact, tin has been used in alloys to make bells, for example, and somewhere else in organ pipes. And I'm just going to step back and have a listen. This is actually a tin-lead alloy. And I'm going to blow into the bottom of it. You can hear this organ pipe makes a lovely noise. And these tin lead alloys were famous for actually giving the sweetest sounds to organs in Europe. But there was a great problem. It's interesting that it's very, very difficult to find organs and organ pipes that are really complete that date back to before the 18th century. And for a long time, people wondered why this might be. Well, it turns out that the 17th century was what was called the Little Ice Age. And during that period, the winters were very cold in Europe, and the summers were actually quite cool. Meanwhile, in the churches, something really insidious set in. The tin would be infected with a disease they believed called tin pest or tin rot. Suddenly, tiny little lesions, dark gray lesions, would appear on the surface of the pipes. And gradually, the tin would fall apart. It would become brittle. So this form here is referred to by chemists as beta tin, white tin. And if you cool it down below 13 degrees, very, very slowly, it transforms to a second phase, which is called alpha. And this actually has become my obsession in the last few months. It's incredibly hard to make alpha tin. It's, if you look at research papers from the last 40, 50 years about alpha tin, every single one says alpha tin is very interesting because the arrangement of the tin atoms is exactly the same as what you have in diamond, in silicon, in germanium, but we can't make it. We've really struggled. It's very hard. And in fact, I've managed to make a little bit. And you might want to take a look here. And you can see them, the gray tin sitting in this little vial, which looks actually rather reflective, but much darker than its brighter cousin. Now, this seemingly trivial transformation has actually taken me almost six months to achieve. So the secret is to use tin foil. No, not that crinkly stuff you have in the kitchen. That's actually aluminum. But this stuff, this is real tin foil. And when you cool this down and then press a little crystal of gray tin against this foil of white tin, overnight you see the infection travel along the length, and it crumbles away and, and falls apart. So the interesting question is, why does the tin transform? And this is something which is well known from all kinds of elements, the idea of allotropes. Different forms, different sort of connected arrangements of the element, which are stable at different temperatures. Now, tin too has a number of phases. And the low temperature diamond phase is actually a semiconductor, a semi-metal, whereas on the other hand, the room temperature form is actually metallic. And it has 
a distorted closed pack structure. If you start applying high pressures to these materials, you know what? You can transform them to other phases, other arrangements again. And so playing around within this space of temperature and pressure can give us huge amounts of information about what's actually going on in terms of the bonding of these materials and to help us to understand the thermodynamics and the fundamental physics of what makes tin tick. <laughs>